Hi hey guys, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at CC3. This is 3.1.6, section 3.1.6, uh, specifically number 3-56. So this is a situation where we're given a rule. So our rule, I'll write it so we can see it clearly. Y is equal to X squared plus 2. And they want us to complete a table for the rule. Okay, Then plot and connect the points on the graph. Okay, so again, we read, be sure to label axes, include the scale, and use negative and positive values for x as well as uh, a value of 0. So when I create a table for any rule, um, good rule of thumb is to, on your x values that you use, I tend to always start with something like uh, negative 3 and work my way to positive 3. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. 1, 2, and 3. And using these values will give you a good idea what the graph looks like. If we had to, we could add more values if we weren't still sure what the, the graph um, looks like. So the graph of the solutions. So let's start with this. So if we're putting in a negative 3, remember we're putting that negative 3 into that x. And that is x squared. What that means is you're taking x times x and then adding 2. x squared is x times x, then add 2. So negative 3 times negative 3. So I'll write the math out here. So we have negative 3 times negative 3 plus 2. So what do we have when we take a negative 3 times negative 3? You get a positive 9, then plus 2. So you get 11. So it's x times x then add 2, right? Multiplications first, then add 2. So in this case, negative 2 times negative 2. I'll show one more. So negative 2 times negative 2, then add 2. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. So it's positive 4 plus 2, which you'll get 6. So then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Plus 2 is then 3. And 0, when you put a 0, 0 times 0 is 0. So add 2, you get 2. And then put a positive 1 in. So 1 times 1 is 1, plus 2 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4, right? Plus 2 is 6. And then 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So putting in my values and my x values into this rule here gives me these corresponding y values. Now they want us to graph this, so I'll get some graph paper out so we can see what the graph is going to look like. Um, and I notice that my x values, I want to make sure that my x axis is long enough and can fit these x values. So I go from negative 3 to 3, so I know I'll count in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, about 5 in, I could say would be where my um, y axis would be. I'd be safe there. Maybe I'll go 6 in just so I have enough room if I needed to plot a few more points. So, um, and then Y, you know, you've got to go up to at least 11. So I'll count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'll go count down 12 so I have enough room. So right here sounds like a good place for my origin, your center of your graph. Okay, then draw nice straight axes. If you've got a straight edge, it's always good to use a straight edge to make straight um, lines, uh, and then my x-axis as well. Okay, uh, And notice I don't have any negative y values. There's no negative y values at this time, so if we can determine the pattern and we notice there's no negative y values, then I don't need to really have too much space down here in the negative, in the quadrants 3 and 4 where y is negative. Uh, oh, on my axes, don't forget arrows on each of the axes to show that this has an infinite span. So let's graph our, uh, plot our points. So negative 3, 11. Oh, I need to label my scale. Sorry, we got to label the scale of the, of the axes. So that's going to be a 1, 2, and that's a 3. And I'm going to go this direction, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And with my y's, um, I'm also going to go by ones, but just to save some space and make it look a little neater, I'm going to skip up to two, and then four, and then six, and then eight, right? So I'm still going by ones, but I'm skipping a, a line each time, and then ten, 
and then this would be down here at negative two. So just at least to show my spacing on my scale of my axes. Okay, so now let's plot points. We've got negative three, 11. So X is negative three, Y is positive 11. So I follow my line up to positive 11. So right here was positive 11 for the Y, negative three for the X. And negative two for the X, positive six for the Y. Negative one for the X, positive three for the Y. Zero for the X, and then two for the Y, right? So that goes right there. One for the X, three for the Y. Two for the X, six, oops, right there, for the Y. Three for the X, and 11 for the Y. So again, if I look at my pattern, I could see my, my dots. I'm creating this uh, U shape, right? And, and I'm starting to hopefully see that if every time I have a squared term, when my X is squared in my function here, in my rule, I end up with this U shape. And we have a name for this U shape. It is a parabola, right? The U shape here is called a parabola. So I just carefully continue to curve. It's not straight. It's more of a curve, right? You can see that from each integer value, the rate increases, right? So from here to here is one, and then I go up to three, and then I go up another five. So I'm increasing a little bit um, at a higher rate than just as a constant rate. So, uh, and make sure you have arrows on your parabola to show that the solutions to this fun this rule right continue i could put in more values i could put in a four into my table and get a, a 18 right if i put a four in four times four is 16 plus two will get 18 so I, that would be off my graph here but it does exist so arrows say there is more values as this graph continues and then the last thing is make sure you uh, name your rule but name your graph right put the rule on the graph paper so we see that that rule, y equals x squared plus 2, belongs to this graph because that those are the solutions to that rule. All of these are the solutions to the rule, right? So that's in between here. I could put a, a, a 1 half in my rule. I could put 1 half in my rule, and I'd come up with a value up here. And where that value is, that would be 1 fourth. It would be 2 and 1 fourth if I put in one half, one half, one times one half is one fourth plus two makes it two and one fourth. So yeah, that exists, right? So there's values that exist in between the integer uh, values. All right. So that is what we needed to do for three dash 56.